Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about the Law of Universal Gravitation, also known as LUG. This is going to be an introduction to subtopic 6.2. We're going to talk about the equation that tells us the size of the force due to gravity acting between any two masses. That's right, any two masses. To introduce this idea, let's go back to our favorite problem ever. There's a lamp hanging from the ceiling by a cord. One force acting on the lamp is the weight of the lamp, also known as the force due to gravity. The question to ask yourself is what other force exists in the universe that must be equal in size and opposite in magnitude to the weight of the lamp by Newton's third law? What is the Newton's third law uh, pair that goes with this weight? What other force is acting that is equal to the weight of the lamp and in the opposite direction because of Newton's third law. See if you remember how to do it. Pause the video. Tell me what other force is equal and opposite. Okay, if you said tension in the cord or the force of the cord on the lamp, that is not correct. The answer is the force of the lamp on the earth. Because the idea, remember, is that the weight of the lamp is the force of the earth pulling down on the lamp. If I cut the cord of the lamp, those two forces are no longer equal, but these two forces will always and forever be equal. That's what Newton's third law says. And it says something very deep about how gravity works. Right? It's amazing, but if this lamp is two pounds, the Earth pulls down on the lamp with two pounds of force, and the lamp pulls up on the whole planet Earth, all the mass of the Earth, with two pounds of force. Because any two objects with mass will exert a gravitational force on each other. They will pull on each other with an attractive force of gravity. Those forces are equal in size and opposite in direction. And the size of those forces comes from the equation we're going to go into, Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. And here it is. The force is going to be between any two masses. So here are the variables we're going to use in the equation. We're typically going to have a bigger mass and a smaller mass. Maybe it's the Earth and a lamp, the Earth and the moon, Jupiter and one of its moons person and another person uh, all right you'll see some places they just call them m1 and m2 the iv will make a distinction of capital m and little m which doesn't really matter for hl students the big m distinction is a little bit helpful when we get into some later work with fields all right but there's two masses and there's a distance between them which we're going to define as r uh, this is for radial distance and it's officially the distance between the object centers and those two masses will pull on each other with a force that is this big here it is all right, so this is right from your data booklet. Uh, in your data booklet, here's how they write it. F gives the gravitational force. Now, of course, there's two in two different directions. This will only give us the magnitude, the size of the force. We need to know it's an attractive force to figure out which way the force is on either object. And it turns out the force is equal to the product of the two masses multiplied together, divided by the distance between them squared, and also multiplied by this big G out front. Big G is the gravitational constant. It's a number in the front of your data booklet. Here it is, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Crazy units to make this equation work. Right? It's essentially the coefficient of proportionality between all this stuff and the force due to gravity. You notice G is a very small number, 10 to the minus 11. It's, uh, it scales this fraction by a, by a very small amount, if you want to think of it that way. Gravity, it turns out, is a very weak force. Uh, and yet, it is the force that dominates the universe. Very interesting. We'll get into that. But there you go. That's the equation to find the size of the force acting between two objects. So let's dive into it a little bit. Okay, one thing to know about the force due to gravity is it is always attractive. All mass pulls on all other mass. Every single bit of mass in the universe is pulling on every other single bit of mass in the universe. And that equation tells us a few things. If we were to put it into words, the size of the force is proportional to each mass. Or in other words, it's proportional to the product of the masses. And it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance, meaning if the square of the distance gets bigger, the force will get smaller. Here's a way to picture that. It's called, we do have a name for this kind of thing. You'll notice as we go through the course, there are a number of equations or laws that have this sort of format with some kind of one over d squared or one over r squared. We call that an inverse square law. Inverse uh, sort of meaning one over. And so 
the force depends on one divided by the distance to the between the objects squared. So as the distance increases, the force decreases and pretty quickly because the distance is squared in the de denominator there. So here's a classic example. You have an apple on the surface of the earth. Now, one thing to think about is if you are on the surface of the earth, the distance between your center and the center of the earth is this, which is the radius of the earth. So right now, you are one earth radius away from the center of the earth. So that would be the distance we would use, say, if we were using lug. So let's say this apple weighs one newton on the surface of the earth. When is this distance away? That's about right. That's about a quarter of a pound. If I take that apple and I take it out into outer space and I go up a distance of 2D twice the radius of the earth away, now I've doubled the distance and because it depends on 1 over D squared, I'm going to do 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4. The apple's weight, the force due to gravity, decreases by a factor of 4 when I double the distance. If I triple the distance, it'll decrease by a factor of 9. If I quadruple the distance, it'll decrease by a factor of 16. And so that force will get much, much smaller as we get the distance between the objects increases. It will decrease with the square of the distance in the denominator. All right, so that's called an inverse square law. We're going to see it in a couple different ways. And this is why even though everything is pulling on everything in the universe, you don't notice much except the Earth pulling on you. Uh, Jupiter is very, very big, but it's also real far away. And so its gravitational force on you is basically zero. You can do the math. Why, you can give it a shot if you want. See how much Jupiter's pulling on you? It's not much. It's so far away. Let's try a few of those. Uh, so we're just going to do some basic practice at the equation here uh, just to get the hang of it. The one thing, honestly, that's going to be, you got to be careful with is making sure you got good calculator skills because everything is going to be powers of 10. Everything's going to be in scientific notation. So you really want to warm up those E buttons on your calculator. Definitely use the E button. Do not, do not, do not write like 5.97 time symbol 10 carat 24 in your calculator. You're going to have a terrible time uh, with order of operations and parentheses in your calculator. E is a lifesaver. So here we go. If we want to find out how much is the Earth pulling on the moon, we can use lug. That equation will tell us. Average lunar distance here means the distance between the Earth and the moon on average. It changes a little bit, but that's about on average the distance between their centers. There's the mass of the Earth, it's big. There's the mass of the Moon, also pretty big. And so if we want to use lug, you try this and just make sure, honestly, that you can punch these numbers into your calculator and get the right answer. Um, you're going to be doing a lot of work in scientific notation with big numbers. Of course, make sure that we put our distance in meters. This is very common with lug kind of problems. A lot of these you know, planetary sizes and distances are expressed in kilometers. We got to make sure we put that in meters. So I'm just saying 384,402 times 10 to the 3 because kilo means times 10 to the 3. That's for me an easy way to do it. So I'm going to write down here 384,402E3 squared for my denominator, my calculator. All right, of course, you could write 384,402,000 meters and then square that. But there you go. Make sure you can plug that in. You should get this much 1.98 times 10 to the 20 newtons. A huge force that the Earth and Moon are pulling on each other with. Something to think about. That there's that huge force between the Earth and the Moon. Why don't we crash into each other? We'll dive into that another day. That's to keep you up at night. All right, here's some other problems you can try. I encourage you to try these out on your own. Practice a little bit with lug. Start getting a sense of these numbers. The moon pulls on you, the earth pulls on you with your weight, whatever you weigh when you stand on the bathroom scale, that's the force due to gravity between the earth and you. But what about the moon? The moon's got a bunch of mass. It's not too terribly far away, relatively speaking, in the grand scheme of things. So if you want to think about your weight, if you know your weight in pounds, you could figure out your mass in kilograms with this little conversion here. Could you figure out how much the moon is pulling on you? It's not very much. It's not nothing, but it's hardly anything. You certainly won't notice it or go floating as the moon comes overhead. But you can calculate the force between them. And also, just for fun, for a bonus, find a friend, find somebody else, think about somebody else in the universe. How far away are they? How attracted are you and that person? What's the attractive force between you and that person? You can use lug to figure it out. All right, try those out just for fun. Get a sense of some of these numbers. 
All right, so there's your introduction to lug, to just the equation we use to figure out the force due to gravity between any two masses. You can truly use it for any two masses. And we'll start diving into some of the details and consequences of that exciting idea uh, in these next couple of lessons. All right, there you go. Have fun.